morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to this new course, e-programming and information systems. It's a very interesting course. Why do I say that? Because it's composed of those that course outline. You can see that there is a lot of subheadings. There is a lot of subsystems which will have cover to cover to come up with e procurement as a course with those information systems as subsystems. So you must read, you must understand this course outline so that you understand what we are going to cover. All right, before we do that, we want you to understand what we mean by, by procurement. What is procurement? What is your understanding of, e of procurement? If you understand that, then that will be okay. Let me give you a definition so that we are on the same page. I would rather define it as the process made up of a range of activities by which an organization obtains or gains access to their resources. Look at the course outline again. This will give you what I'm trying to explain here. You might have a different definition, but I'm sure we agree somehow. So that's the program. What we are saying in e-programming is we want to electronize what we defined above. We want to electronize what you understand in programming. Then that would be e-programming, electronic programming. In other words, we are just electronizing the programming process. So it's defined as a technology solution that facilitates co corporate by using the internet. E-business, e-solution that support the buying process. Go back to the course outline. This will be, then you will understand what we are talking about there. Or you can also read the definitions which I have given below. Right? So once you have understood that, you also want to say in Zimbabwe, we have got a new act. What does it say about e-programming? It says something. This is what I picked up. What it says is e-procurement means the procurement of goods, but they also add on the definition we have given above, add the construction works and services, because this is a government. This is government definition. The construction works. There is a lot which happens there in government. So generally, the definition is the same given by the new act. So the new act does cover e-programming, but you need to read it. You need to have it on your desk so that you constantly refer to it. I will ask, ask a number of questions based on it as we proceed. E-programming process, what is it? It's really a necessary solution for large companies, even for smaller companies, because it makes it easier and more effective the management of the entire process of purchasing and supply. On the other hand, for smaller companies, in adopting e programming can become part of the global village. This is important. That makes your course very important. Even the small companies can also participate. What are the objectives of the, of the act? As I said, I'll always come back to the act so that we move together. It ensures procurement is effected in a manner that is transparent, fair, honest, cost-effective, and competitive. Promotes competition among bidders, equitable treatment of bidders within the Procurement Act that gives value of money. It does promote integrity, fairness in business, and confidence in those people we are dealing with. Procurement regulation of the Again, I will refer you to the new act. What does it say? This is what I picked up. Read it and understand it. Hmm? What do they do? And if they are doing that programming, are they doing it electronically? For example, develop the use of electronic tools, procure including procurement website. So the act is covered, covers the e-procurement. Develop and implement transparent equitable framework for registration of bid. That's part of procurement. 
We will also look at the registration of suppliers, registration of vendors. So it's part of what we are going to do. Now, what problems do we face in the procurement? And are these problems solved by e procurement? It's very interesting. How are these solved? problems solved by e programming. Programming challenges. This, you know, you can read it. You have been reading about these in the, in the papers. Description of tender delays, cartel formation to suppress competition. That is the grouping of bidders, physical threats to bidders, tempering with temper, tender files. Delays in finalizing tenders, lack of transparency because you want your people to win the, the tenders. So, does e programming solve these problems? These are the challenges, but does e programming solve those problems? Hmm? Does e programming resolve these problems? If you could just help me answer that question. So if it does, it means in Zimbabwe, the process or those challenges we have cited about are no longer there or they are reduced. Okay? Now, e procurement role, this is what it's supposed to do. But I also want you to refer to the real situation and say, is this what we are experiencing? Because we have got a new act. Mm -hmm. Project plan. Avoid unnecessary project. Transparency in the planning. Decision making. Very crucial. Mm -hmm. Project and design documentation. Avoid unnecessary tender documents. And then it's easy bidding procedure if you are using e procurement. Tender process. Increase tender competition. Rely real-time information is given. Reduce human interaction. In other words, reducing corruption. Contract award. Monitoring of contract execution. Accountability. Increased performance. This is what we want. Accounting and auditing. Auditability. We have got some audit checks. Why? Because this is a new, an electronic system. Transparent in the open world. Cooperate with the other agencies. Synergy is also different. This is the role. But again, the question says, does, it, does this system resolve the problem or the challenges we have cited about? What are the e-programming benefits? If you have got those challenges, and we are able to resolve them. So what are the benefits? Think about them. Write them down and they compare with what I have here. Benefits accrue. Reduce the human error. Enhanced integrity. Broad transparency. Facilitate standardization. Avoid human interaction. Avoid corruption. Avoid cartels. Cartels. Cartel. Grouping so that you suppress others. Ensure total anonymity of the participants. You will never know that an old man like me is also placed the bid. System is an inbuilt evaluation that introduces corruption. All details hosted on the website. And you can always follow them up and say, where is my tender? What is the progress? And you get the, the problem. Bidding documents, download it free. Bidders could check on the status and progress. That's interesting. Mm? If you have sent a person with DHL, this is what we're talking about. You can always trace it and find out who actually got the person. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about. Who actually won? But we've got some programming phases. When we are talking of phases, we might be saying we are also trying to look 
go to the details of e programming, the detailed part of e programming. These are some of the phases. E sourcing, you can't do without e sourcing. Why? Because if you recognize the e programming, we we'll also have a look at what's the difference between e programming and e sourcing. Are they different? Because this is the starting point. Okay. Then the next phase, e supply chain management. You are doing a course in supply chain. So I don't have to waste time on this one. Okay. E sourcing. What are we saying? This is internet in the airport application and decisions about two that facilitate the interaction between buyers and suppliers, ESOS, through the use of online negotiations, online auctions, reverse auctions, and so on. ESOSing is especially associated with online auctions, which enable prices reduction by introducing the element of competition. They are visible, clearly structured, and they make the procurement transparent according to those others. Are we experiencing this? Because we are now using the new act. What does the new act say about the ESOC? What does it say? So you must have this to go and buy it. And you have it. Download it. You have it. What is the difference between e-sourcing and e-program? That's the question I, which I posed earlier. Do we have any difference there? Think about it and tell me what is the difference. I will tell you this. Proceeding the actual purchase of goods and services, sourcing facilitates a full cycle of people, facilitates by analyzing the company spending their money on these assets. This includes identifying, selecting opportunities to reduce expenditure, using energy of standard markets and the company's needs in the negotiating, managing, monitoring contracts for goods. So but what does procurement say? We've already defined it. Procurement, which is a transaction and compliance part of purchasing. This includes all those subsystems which are written in your course outline. Right? In your course outline, e sourcing is also there. So, e programming is the counterpart of e sourcing. You can separate the two. To me, e sourcing is the starting point. To me, e sourcing is the subsystem of e programming system. Unless you've got another definition, I'll be pleased to hear that one. Hmm? Through Though they are both important parts of the purchasing side, there are many differences between e sourcing and e programming. It, it, it is the spender analysis, supply selection, and contracts are involved in e sourcing that lead to the e programming. E sourcing can be used as strategic to ensure that the best pricing and value are located in the contract. That is proof hmm? in the e programming contract. Though they are different processes, e programming and e sourcing and e programming are two halves of the whole. In other words, I want you to marry the two. Because to me, e sourcing is the starting point of e programming, or is a subsystem of e programming. I take it as a process which is involved in e programming. E-sourcing, let me re-emphasize this. Supply organization are often hesitant to participate in an e-auction because they feel a supplier may have been already been selected. How many times have you hesitated to apply for a job? Was there someone who is acting there? But look at this. This might be, of course, there are times when this can occur. But as long as the cost of participating is less than the potential benefit, as long as you don't benefit, then you, you don't lose anything. It's a wet try so that you get yourself moving. What advantage does the e-sourcing offer to an organization? If you thought about it, do you have any advantages? 
What are the advantages? Think about it. This is e programming. I'm not talking of sourcing, but I'm talking of e sourcing. Please, you must remember that. That is very, very important. When you are answering your questions, don't make it manual, make it electronic. Because we are thinking electronically. So, what are the advantages? What are the benefits of using e sourcing? There must be many. Just write them up and then convey with these ones. Increased transparency in purchasing or processing of goods. Participating helps companies better understand the potential suppliers by improving the transparency. Insight in the bio organization. Don't deal with the desk suppliers. Don't deal with the briefcase suppliers. All right. Then you understand what type of organization, where is it located, what is its mission, what is its vision, what are its objectives, what are its goals. Then you understand. That's interesting part. In other words, you want more information on the people or the organizations you are dealing with. Improved diligence in the validation of the product. Six different. What are the differences? Which one is better? All right. So e sourcing gives you that, that advantage. Creation of disciplined synergies, the connection between the departments, the connection between you and the suppliers and the vendors. This is very interesting. That's e sourcing. Hmm? That's an advantage. Reduce customer acquisition costs. Hmm? You are doing it online. So you quickly make decisions because the information is there. So we should do what? Leveling of the playing field. The big ones, the small ones like me will also come in and they participate. Hmm? This then that makes it a block of it. That's issues. That's an advantage. Right. Better competitive intelligence. Participating in issues and provide the means to a better understanding of your competition. And it creates competitive intelligence. Competitive intelligence. You are competing, they must be able to compete. Don't be afraid to compete. Adoption of technology innovation. All right. For the synergies to come out clear, then your technology must speak future. We, we must have a connection. We must, we must have similar platforms so that the platforms can communicate. So you must improve so that they remain, so that they remain in business. Hmm? So that's those are the advantages. But all the same, the other question is, what are the challenges? What challenges do you face when you are using e-sourcing? It's very important. What challenges are you facing? We said these are the two areas we are going to look at. Then the supply chain. I don't want to waste time on the supply chain. It's not necessary for me to do that. But that's the supply chain. Hmm? But when we are talking of e procurement, then we must be talking of e supply chain. All right. What does the role, what are the roles of e procurement in supply chain? Why are you doing this course? Then you must justify. If you justify, because this is part of supply chain management. Hmm? E-program and the supply chain. This I don't, I don't think it's necessary for me to go on and waste your time because I know you've got the answers. Hmm? E-programming improves supply chain in many ways. Online catalogs, e-marketing, e-advertise. Visibility availability of and attributes enables quick decision making online purchase orders expire ex, expedite the ordering process in other words it does reduce the time reducing the time you are also reducing the money saving the money advanced purchase orders notification and acknowledgement is streamlined and delivered to the money that's simple then you will talk of e-supply chain when you are talking of e-supply chain, 
you are also just electronized what you have already said about supply chain. Hmm? It is the series of processes involved in a company. And it, its main partners manage in an integrated manner in an electronized in a new technology solutions. Can also be defined as a collaborative use of technology. Collaborative in the sense that you, the supplier or the vendor, you are connected to your counterparts. You are connected. In the same way, there is a coordination and control. In the same way, you can help each other in the planning, management, e requirement, as well as the management of supply chains, planning, coordination, control. And these are some of the advantages of what I mentioned. What does the act say about the supply chain? Go back and find out and tell me. That's another. Subhead or another subsystem in the e program, e tender. What is tendering, first of all? What does the act say about the tender? What do you understand by this process of tendering? It's mentioned in your, in your course out there. What do you understand? I want to hear your understanding. What do you understand about e tender? We just electronize that. Then it's e tender. The course is e programming. So whenever you're answering your questions, it must be electronized answer. In other words, remove the manual and make it electronized. Then you are there. Tendering is a method of entering purchasing. Contract. You are going into the contract. Hmm? What are security requirements which are required when you are going into the tendering? Non repetition and authentication. Secure time in the record keeping. Again, I will still ask the question Does this solve the challenges we have mentioned about? Does this solve the challenges we have mentioned about? If it does, that's great. Hmm? Non repetition and authentication. Non repetition property is proof that something has happened. This has taken place. So that requirement must be there. The programs for non can also be an extension of authentication. So what is authentication? With a difference, it provides difference of, a difference between denial of their action by participating party. You can deny, but when you authenticate, then there is no way out. In an e-tender, the digital signature, at times you use your fingers when you are buying your, your, your medicine in the pharmacies. That's authentication. Hmm? You can provide authentication and non-reputation. Non-reputation that the action is taking place. So that's e-tender. You can't run away. You can't cheat. Why? Because there are these processes which you've got to go through. Secure time. Hmm? You don't have to wait. That, uh, I think the, that old man of mine or the young man of mine is not submitted, so I have to wait. You are not given that chance. Security of heat tendering system relies crucially on the recording of date and time at which events occur within that system. The main areas of concern relating to the security time integrity and the closing and opening of e tender. How many times have we read about this? Delays, corruption. So e tendering will not allow you to do that. Time integrity. The first option for time spending an event is to generate a log record that includes the description of the event. Remember, when you are using a system, there is that law, and then at times referred to as the audit trail. Right. 
A second option you know, involves using the digital timestamp system that associates dates and time information to the electronic documents. How will you change that? Unless if you are a hacker. Closing and opening of tender, e-tender box. No tender subpoena should be allowed after the stipulated closing time. It's crossed electronically, and there's no way you can submit. In order to mitigate the threat of inside collusions, submitted tenders should not be opened before the establishment. If you open, because there's that law, there's that audit trail, it will report you. For the control of e tender box open time, there are a variety of technical mechanisms that can be considered in order to protect confidentiality of submitted tenders until the pre accorded accorded open time. Pre accorded open time. So e tender is very important. All right. Secure record keeping. It and systems generate and process electronic documents. The legal key legal requirements for record key is the preservation of integrity of goods, both the documents and the contact. Right? So that is important, secure, and the legal requirement should be there. All right. Maximize the if if it Evidentiary weight of electronic document. The e tender system needs to ensure that evidential significant pictures are identified and are available and usable. Identify the author of electronic document, establish the time and date as we've already said up above that, alter or alteration, establish the authenticity of the electronic records and establish the reliability of that program. So that's part of e-tendering. Hmm? Important e-tendering documents material. These are very important. You can go on and find out more about this. These are very important. Please, I'll ask you to read about these so that you expand what I've given you here. Tender document submission, tender specification, addendum produced by the principal, the tender revo revocation notice submitted by the tenders, and so on. Go and read more and understand this. E tender legal requirement. What I'll also ask you to do is go and read. Go and read these acts. Then you will understand. Hmm? the Consumer Act, the procurement. So you understand the legal part of, of procurement. You got the procurement act. The new one should be talking about. Access to information protecting privacy. Copyright and neighboring act, right act, trade act, cyber security, and so on. These are important to your course. As legal documents, link them Procure, e procurement, then you're home and dry. Then you understand the legal, the legal part of your course. The development of e tendering stages. There are different ways. Could be one way communication, in other ways, one way, one way traffic. You understand this is a one way traffic. Mm -hmm. Electronic tender and contract formation. What, what really do you mean by that? A one way communication. You should understand that. that it allows the prince to post tender ad and the documents on a web, website. And the tender has downloaded the documents. And the documents are still submitted in paper. Put on sign and the response. Yeah. So that's why it is one way. Electronically, it's just one way. There's the website, you download, but when you are returning, it's done in paper. Hmm? What are the weaknesses of that? 
There is no two-way communication occurring in an electronic environment. So that's why you call it a one-way. The secure circuits layer is an effective mechanism provide integrity and confidentiality of communication. But if it is on paper, then it's not there. That's a weakness of this system. Then the two way, what are we saying about the two? The second phase is tender submission and two way communication. The stage of development is where the tender documents are downloaded from the website and also submitted or returned electronically. Then that's a two way, electronically. But what is bad here is this. However, the tender is not awarded electronically. Oh my goodness. Then that's not nice, is it? Then it has got some weakness. But when the system where the tender, the awarding of tender is done electronically, why to avoid those challenges we have mentioned about? Don't forget about that. You want to avoid those. So the two way, one way, two way, do not solve our problems, which we have highlighted earlier. Hmm? Electronic tender contract. We said it's not the two way. It's not. But what then happens if we have, if we have got some, if you return them electronically and then electronically the contract is done. How is it done? The tender is awarded and the contract forward electronically with ongoing contract administration carried out electronically via the collaboration software. The collaboration software. We are collaborating the supplier and the principal. That their systems are talking together. In the previous electronic system, digital signatures were proposed as technical means to ensure that non-repudiation or pre-contract communication ensure the non-repudiation we don't have to refuse, but this does take care. In this new electronic tender system, electronic signatures may be needed to ensure authenticity of the contract. Electronic signatures, we have already mentioned them. The probability that this authentication will be brought into dispute is likely to be much higher than that of a pre-contract communication. Again, read your ads. What do they say? Failing to prove authentication in electronic signed contract may lead to severe consequences. Failure to do that. So this is a system which you might read and understand. That's the third phase. It's done electronically. But when it is done electronically, then this is the way to do it. Right, e tendering architecture. There are three possible architectures for e tender. Could be principal based, it could be trusted part based TTP, distributed TTP architecture, DTTP. These are the three. Right? More and understand about them. Let me just scratch the surface. Principle best. Principle best architecture is most mostly used by government e tendering organizations. I'm sure most of you are in government, then you want in a position not to understand this. The principal is then the main administrator, in other words, the minister. Hmm? The principal is responsible for ensuring authenticity of the tender. Tenders. Principal. Tenders usually verify the identity of the principal and all correspondence coming from the principal, including tender specification documents and using certificate distributed by the principal. What certificate? Because they are registered. Tenders submit tender documents directly to the principal. The principal maintains the tender box application and they must store all submitted tender documents securely and ensure that no tender documents are submitted after or reviewed before 
the tender cross time. If this is done manually, then we have a problem. I'm sure you can identify those problems. The principal is also responsible for the secure storage. And I archive the document of that tender has been awarded in case of legal problems. In case of legal problems. The architecture places a great deal of trust in the principal. You must be a trusted partner. Tenderers place their trust in access control system employed by the principal to ensure that the collusion or internal malfeasance by the principal is, is difficult. So the system must be intact. The principal must also develop a scheme for verifying the identity and the within, within authenticating documents from the tenders. The principal would run a certificate authority, issuing certificates and the conduct a prior cryptography key, gener key generation process that tender us when they complete the pre-qualification process. Pre-qualification process. Why? Because they are also assessed if you are using the system. Then the trust third party best TTP. This is commonly used in the industry or independent government bodies like the principal. Like in the principal, the TTP is responsible for the authentication of all parties. So there's no difference. To enable this, the TTP should act as a certificate authority issuing certificate. And the key is the principal and tenant. The TTP also act as a time step in seven. We say time is very important. Time step in seven. The principal and the tenants should synchronize their clocks with the time published by the TTP. That's if the TTP based act, the TTP entity is responsible for enforcing and maintaining the e-tendering requirements on of non-reputation authentication, secure time, record key. Remember what we've said about this, about that is important. Now, the distributed. Why distributed? Let's understand, let's understand the distribution part of it. Using multiple TTPs, it's an expansion of TTPs to provide services such as secure time, server, and the certificate authority. Those two, these are distributed. And they are not done by the TT. The STS performs two functions secure time server, time synchronization, time controlled key release for accessing submitted documents. Very important. The CA, Certificate Authority, is the function of key registration and key verification. Because of the separation of these roles, this architecture lends itself to a large scale e tender implementation, which is then causes delays, isn't it? Why? Because it's distributed. Because it's distributed. Right. So that's the end of our lecture. I hope to see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.